maker Ginkgo Bioworks is betting big on this living medicine, announcing an $80 million investment and a long-term plan to collaborate with synthetic biotics company Synologic today. Here to tell me more is Jason Kelly. He is the CEO of Ginkgo Bioworks. Um, so living medicine, how many people are in this space right now? Oh, almost nobody. Yeah. The, the, uh, I mean, it, it's sort of this exciting idea that your drugs could actually be alive. Right. What, what does that mean? Well, you, you've gone in the grocery store and got a bottle of probiotics or something. The, the, each one of those little I get pills. Like yogurt, yeah. Yeah, exactly, and yogurt. <laughs> it, there's living bacteria in there. So you take that little pill, and then billions of bacteria start growing in your gut and help your digestion. Okay. And what Synlogic's doing is reprogramming those bacteria so that they could treat disease. Wow. Yeah, and you can program them kind of like you'd program a computer. How right. effective have they been so far? So they have two uh, candidate drugs in phase one clinical trials, so it's early on in the process. But the idea is that these things are essentially little machines in there. So they're using it to treat uh, inborn errors of metabolism. These are diseases where you basically have, are missing an enzyme, so hmm. you can't break down a food. You build up a toxin, and they're programming these cells in your gut to go find that toxin and kind of suck it up like a vacuum cleaner and chop it up. Why does this, what does this address, I guess, that, that previous medicines, your traditional pills, those kinds of things, why, what, yeah. what does this do that those can't do? Yeah, so, so the most important thing is a living cell can sort of sense and respond to things, right? Like, and think about how your body naturally fights disease, your immune system. It's actually live cells swimming around, finding things, killing them. That, that's, that's the original drug, mm -hmm. right? And then we come along in the 1900s, developed chemical drugs like aspirin. In the 80s with like Genentech, we did protein drugs like insulin. But really, I, I think it's, it's time to have live cells now that we have the ability to program them. And then you can... Do it like your body does it, you know, fight biology with biology. Yeah, and so if this works, what would be kind of the biggest possible applications of this down the road? Yeah, so the thing I'm most excited about that, that Synlogic is working on is in uh, cancer therapy. And so when you have a tumor, it's basically hiding from your immune system, right? That's why it's growing out of control. And so what they do is they inject bacteria in, intratumorally, and then the bacteria sends up like signal flares to attract your immune system over. And I think if, you, if that could get going, it could be a whole new way to, to treat cancer. Oh, sure, which would be great. Any <laughs> early response from the FDA or the scientific community on the viability of all this? Yeah, so the first two trials uh, are, in, are in phase one with FDA now for the inborn errors metabolism. Those are the first two, uh, those would be the first two engineered microbes ever approved by the FDA if they were to go through it. So it's just, we're just at the beginning of this whole thing. Oh, sure. And it could be a, a long, drawn-out process, or you, you could be, like Elizabeth Taylor said, an overnight success, yeah. <laughs> depending, <laughs> depending on how those go. Yeah. Because you're here, I want to ask you about fake meat again. Yeah, sure. Um, more and more headlines about more and more different kinds of products. Yeah, now, Tyson today. Yeah. Tyson today, yeah. of course. KFC is now saying it's going to test uh, some different things. Um, are we... Are we just at the beginning of seeing different kinds of innovation in terms of meat products there? Or what, what are the biggest hurdles right now? So for people who are yeah. saying, hey, you know, Beyond Meat's the only way to play this space, is that true? Oh, definitely not the only way to play. I, I think the most exciting thing to me is this, why is Beyond Meat up so much? I think it's consumers saying, I want to have alternate options. I want them to be healthier, better for the planet. And I'm not afraid anymore of technology in my food, right? We've had this long period where it was like, no, I don't want to see tech in my food, right, period. But now people are saying, look, we have big problems on the planet. I want to eat healthier. Technology helps me in all the other parts of my life. Why can't I have in food? And, and there's a new generation that's okay with that. And I think that's what you see with Beyond Meat. Well, I, I wonder, though, if they get more comfortable with it or familiar and they go, well, wait a minute, is this GMO stuff sure. that I'm consuming? And if I'm yeah. trying to avoid it in my Cheerios, do I really want it in my yeah. burger? And, and those kinds of questions. I, I think we'll have to have those conversations. But I think the industry now has learned to be transparent about that talk about what's in the products, get people excited, and explain the benefits right, uh, to the consumer. And that's what you're seeing with these new products. Absolutely. And you guys have anything else up your sleeve on that front? Uh, nothing we can talk about just yet. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. You're focused on uh, living medicine and curing cancer, which is, which is just fine. Thank you so much. It's great to see you again, Jason. Yeah, really thanks, appreciate Kelly. it. Jason Kelly is the CEO of Ginkgo Bioworks.